Begin by gathering all appropriate materials that will be required beforehand. This standing tray has been covered with a clean, disposable apron and prepared to include everything that will be needed. This includes vacuum tuner tubes with an adapter, a 21 or 23 gauge butterfly needle, a tourniquet, gauze, alcohol swabs, gloves, and a band-aid. For your own safety and the well-being of your patient, protective garments such as a white coat should be worn throughout the procedure. Make sure you have familiarized yourself with the safety mechanism of the type of needle you will use. It is okay to waste a few clean needles so you are comfortable with their use before the procedure is carried out. Our method requires the use of a butterfly needle since it eliminates the need to activate the safety mechanism. However, be aware of two different needle types, sheath needles and spring retraction needles. If the safety mechanism is a needle sheath that slides over the needle, place your third and fourth fingers under the sheath and push up from its base, closing it as shown. Holding the sheath in one hand and pulling its tubing in the other is a common error that can result in either a stick if the sheath slips out of your hand or a splash if the needle clicks into place too rapidly. With spring retraction needles, a common error is to examine the needle after the blood was drawn, realize there is a button, and press it. Doing so can result in micro droplets of blood splashing at your open eyes, mouth, and face. To disarm the needle, either press the button under a gauze while the needle is still in the vein, or place your third and fourth fingers firmly behind the spring and press the button with your thumb by rolling it from the wing to the button. Slowly let the needle retract by releasing pressure from your third and fourth fingers. Begin by washing your hands with soap and water. Be sure to ask the patient if he or she has ever fainted while giving blood. If they have, ask them to lie down while the procedure is being carried out. Ask the patient whether they have a preference for an arm from which to draw blood and position the standing tray accordingly. The tray should be on the side of your non-dominant hand and all materials should be easy to reach. The medical student drawing blood in this video is right-handed, so he has correctly positioned the tray to his left and all materials are comfortably within reach. Put on gloves and begin by assembling the vacutainer adapter and needle apparatus. Politely roll up any clothing covering the venipuncture site and tie the tourniquet to the patient's arm. Since a loose tourniquet is perhaps the most common cause of venipuncture failure, we offer nine steps to tourniquet placement. First, place the tourniquet under the patient's arm. Cross. Invert left hand. Crawl with left. Pull with left. Pull with right. Pinch the cross point. Tuck. Release your index fingers. The tourniquet should be tight and may be uncomfortable for the patient, but not painful. Ischemia should not become an issue for at least 10 minutes and probably more towards 2 hours. Swab the area with an alcohol pad. Wipe until dirt is no longer seen. Next, feel the area for a vein by gently and rapidly pressing up and down along the equator of the antecubital fossa with your right index finger pad. You need not visualize the vein. Instead, you will feel a poof with gentle and repetitive downward and release of pressure to the area. It's okay to puncture an area touched by a clean glove. Continue by uncapping the needle. To do this, hold the base of the needle in one hand and the cap with the other. I've hooked my fingers together so I can dorsiflex these fingers while preventing excess displacement of my hands upon give of the cap. I feel a click or snap that the cap was removed and then it slides off effortlessly. If it does not come off readily, ask for help or discard the needle and try with another one. Avoid pulling the cap directly off the needle like this because a reflex can cause an accidental needle stick. At this point, patients susceptible to vasovagal reactions and syncope will begin feeling symptoms. Maintaining a conversation with the patient during the procedure is a useful method to monitor for signs of syncope. This conversation must be a two-way dialogue and not a one-way physician monologue. If the patient stops talking or answering briskly, then you know they might be about to faint. Tell me about the vacation that you'll be going on. Oh, I'm leaving for the Galapagos on Friday. Once you identify your target vein, grasp the right wing of the butterfly in your right index finger and thumb with the bevel up. Hold the vacutainer adapter and your first empty tube in your left hand. The number of tubes that need to be filled depends on the type of blood test you will be running. Tubes should be filled in order starting with your highest priority test first in case you cannot get additional blood. 
The back container should be loosely in the adapter ready to be punctured, but do not puncture it just yet. Once again, use your left index finger to find the vein for the final time and apply gentle pressure to drag it distally with the left index finger. The third distal interphalangeal should be firmly touching the arm of the patient while the pinky is under the patient's arm, providing stability. This allows your hand to move with the patient if he or she suddenly moves their arm. When you are ready, insert the needle with a quick push rather than very slowly. Doing this motion quickly will pierce the vein rather than letting it roll away. Use a short, abrupt motion by holding the wing of the needle in between your right index finger and thumb and extending them quickly. The end point for advancement of the needle is pressure on the dorsal aspect of your right index finger from the patient's antecubital fossa. Never lose this pressure regardless of your head or left hand movements. The movements of your right hand should be dissociated from the rest of your body to maintain stability of the needle during the blood draw. A patient who intently looks at the needle entering the vein is more likely to faint. If you are concerned that this might be the case with your patient, you can politely request that he or she looks away while the needle is inserted. When you see a flash of blood, your needle is in the vein. Once you see the flash, maintain constant pressure on the patient's forearm with your right, second, and third finger. This keeps the needle in place so it does not dislodge from the patient's arm. If you don't see a flash of blood, do not panic or withdraw the needle. Keep the needle in the patient's arm and feel on either side by applying gentle downward pressure and release of the target area using the left index fingertip. Usually the vein is just next to the needle. Redirect the needle at 30 to 45 degrees towards the vein and make a quick thrusting motion in its direction while stabilizing it with traction with the left thumb or left index finger. A slow thrust will allow the vein to roll away. Upon seeing the flash of blood, pierce the seal of your first vacutainer tube by pushing it against the stopper within the vacutainer adapter. Since you always want to maintain control of the needle, hold it by its wing and do not let it go. Exerting enough pressure using one hand to pierce the seal of the vacutainer tube can be tricky. However, this can be safely carried out in one of three ways. First, if your hands are big enough, grasp the tube with your pinky and the adapter with your thumb and index finger. With the vacutainer within the adapter, apply pressure to the tube and allow the stopper to pierce the seal. You can also press the vacutainer against your chest and force it into the adapter. This requires that you lean forward far enough so that the tubing is not stretched to the point that it puts tension on the needle. Always bring your chest towards the tube and not vice versa. Bringing the tube towards your chest will stretch the tubing and you may inadvertently pull the needle out of the patient's arm. Finally, you can press the vacutainer adapter on the vacutainer tube perpendicularly on a stable surface near the patient. The flash of blood was seen, but there is no flow after piercing the seal of the vacutainer. The vein wall may be occluding the opening of the needle. By retracting the vein with your left index finger, the bore of the needle will be redirected into the lumen of the vessel and allow blood to flow. If necessary, carefully readjust the needle one or two millimeters either out or in to start blood flow. To change tubes, first release the vacutainer from the adapter. To do this, grasp the vacutainer in your left pinky and the adapter in your left thumb and index finger. Upon abduction, you will successfully release the tube from the adapter. Next, place the adapter barrel in your right pinky. Note that during this maneuver, the right pinky will move from underneath the patient's arm to over it. You are now able to gently remove the vacutainer from the adapter with the left hand, place it on the tray, and grab the next tube. Place the next vacutainer gently in the adapter, but do not pierce the seal yet. Doing so requires force and will dislodge the needle from the vein. Instead, grasp the loose adapter and vacutainer complex in your left hand and pierce the stopper to fill the tube. Repeat these steps for the remaining vacutainers that need to be filled. When you have finished collecting your specimens and are ready to withdraw the needle, release the tourniquet by pulling the end of the loop superiorly. If it was properly tied, the tourniquet should come off easily. If you remove the needle prior to releasing the tourniquet, blood can splash at you since it is under pressure. Next, place gauze over the inserted needle without applying pressure. The gauze should be stabilized by your left thumb while the second, third, and fourth fingers are positioned at the elbow, potentiating a vice grip. Remove the needle and as soon as it is safely out of the way, exert pressure on the vein with the vice grip. The most common cause of bruising from phlebotomy is inadequate pressure upon needle withdrawal. When adequate pressure is applied, blood is less likely to ooze under the patient's skin and form a bruise. Notice that the needle is pointed perpendicularly away from the patient's arm to avoid a needle stick, specifically when reaching for other materials. 
simultaneously either dispose of the needle or activate the needle safety mechanism. To properly dispose the needle, first release the adapter from the right pinky into the sharps container. It should hang down, making the wing pivot in your right thumb and index finger so the needle now points away from you. You can now release the wing, but do not withdraw your right hand suddenly until the wing leaves your fingers, as the wing can stick to your glove during disposal. In conclusion, some universal rules to remember are never recap a needle, never leave uncapped needles on the tray, and never leave the butterfly in the vein unsupported. Be sure to ask the patient if he or she has ever fainted while giving blood. Maintaining a conversation with the patient during the procedure is a useful method to monitor for signs of syncope. The tray should be on the side of your non-dominant hand. We offer nine steps to tourniquet placement. Once again, use your left index finger to find the vein for the final time and apply gentle pressure to drag it distally with the left index finger. When you are ready, insert the needle with a quick thrust while maintaining pressure on the patient's arm with your index finger. When changing vacutainer tubes, grasp the adapter with your right pinky and use your left hand to insert the next tube. Release the tourniquet before removing the needle. Maintaining a vice grip is an important step to prevent bruising. Always dispose of the needle in a sharps box.